is this spirit sorry sexuality family life and spirituality can you give that one if those who are operating so that people sexuality family life and spirituality the Bible is very clear that no foundation can anyone lay than the one that has already been made which is what which is what listen I'm not a preacher I'm a teacher so when I ask a question you answer all right <laughs> In the Bible, in Ephesians 4, the list, we have apostles. The apostle is sitting there. There are evangelists. There are pastors. And there are what? There are what? Yeah, this is going to be interactive. Teachers. But because teaching is not more grammarous, we have dropped it in the church. <laughs> Actually, the reason is that most apostles are apostle teachers. They are pastor teachers. So I'm just using them. But it's important. The Bible says that no foundation can anyone lay than the one which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 3, 11. Therefore, at the center of Christianity is Jesus Christ and him crucified. Amen? We must preach the gospel that Jesus came and died for us and rose again and by trusting in him anyone can be saved and become a child of God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3 as you go down he says that do you not know that you are God's temple. That's the Holy Spirit. And in verse 23, say we preach Christ crucified. Whatever we are going to do, we must know that Christ is the pillar and the foundation of our faith. And in verse 30 of 1 Corinthians, he says that in him, God has made him our redemption, our salvation, our sanctification. Everything that happens to a Christian is linked to the resurrection, death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But then, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, he says that we have to build on that foundation. It's like giving birth to a child immediately the day they are born sometimes annoying when they are counting the census 74 years I'm one person and the day old is also counted as one at least there must be some equity so if you are 74 you are counted three times if you're a teenager half and then we are newborn one tenth no because the foundation is the same irrespective of age when you accept Jesus Christ but a child must grow up you build up and in building up our faith our attitude to sexuality and family life is one of the major pillars Before I got married, the Lord prepared me for marriage by two, two sayings of two people and then one a verse in the Bible. The first one was one Dr. Hunter speaking at Resurrection Presbyterian Church. I was about 23 years, no fiancé, no marriage in view, nothing. But he made that statement and the Holy Spirit says, you do hear it? That is your first marriage advice. Young man and woman, 
and he said if a man is filled with the Holy Spirit ask his wife amen amen if a man who is married says he's filled with the Holy Spirit do what why anybody why yes pardon yes listen now when i was coming to preach with you you know see, have you seen me in this suit before but when i'm coming <laughs> i have to show off a little when i go home my wife will see me in pieto who have you ever seen any man fighting with another christian sister in this church before how many men even <coughs> in church uh, elders are not harassing their wives and as elder Chinobua, who happens to come from the right place in ghana because he comes from five miles from my village said if a man is filled with the holy spirit the fruits of the holy spirit what are they Ephesians, uh, galatians 5 22 please can you project it the fruits what are they love yes we go on kindness goodness faithfulness go on go on self-control hey man patience and the love there is not sexual love which the men likes very much the husbands he is talking about unconditional love what it means in marriage is that irrespective of the behavior of your wife you will treat her the same always for her good amen uh, i know your wife very well not because i live in your house because he's a daughter of adam and eve nobody is married to a perfect spouse but god tells husbands to love their wives as christ loved the church and laid down his life for her where are you going he says when you are that's why john hunter says if you are filled with the holy spirit ask the husband it will be a test of spirituality And when you go to Proverbs, I don't know why always he's after the woman. Nagging woman, like, you know, having a bad wife is like water dripping on you when you are sleeping and other things. But the bad, what he's saying is that if a woman says she's filled with the Holy Spirit, ask the husband, ask the husband, ask the husband, whether he is submissive, whether he's having the Sarah principle 1 peter 3 1 to 6 so much that her quality of her life was such that he had total control on abraham whatever sarah said good or bad unfortunately sometimes bad abraham behaved, uh, did it and he says that the secret was that her spirituality was such that abraham when the wife talks, sometimes even Abraham loses his head. Is, are you living with your husband? So there's a direct link between your family life and your spirituality. The strength of the church also depends on your family life. How many times, how many of you come to this, come to church four times in a week? Let me see the show of your hands. Those who come to church four times. 
I'm old, so if I don't see you. Three times every week, they come here three times. Let me see you by a show of hands. Hey, my friends, two times, two, two, two. How many? Two. If, if you come here two times, I've seen two hands. Stand up. On the average, if you come here two times a week, stand up. Stand up so that I can see. I want to see because it's difficult for me to see. Okay. But you see how small they are? You can sit down. Even twice, there are less than 100. The rest are one Sunday. Shame unto us, though. But do you know what difference the church in your house can be? The church in my house meets at least 21 times in a week. And that is exclusive of our individual quiet times because that is not a church where two or three are gathered together. I and my wife meet around the word of God and pray two times a day, morning and evening. And do you know why I got the, that one? That will be my second reason, and then I'll be finishing soon. I'm keeping... And then I have to meet with my household from 7 to 7, 15, three times. Times... Seven, twenty-one. When the church in the home is strong, the church in the church is stronger. Amen. Let me embarrass two people. When we go home and they beat me, all die, be die. Our caretaker was baptized here last week. My assistant very soon will be a youth leader here. I trust the Lord. Amen. How many of you have come to my house <laughs> to bring them here? When the church in the home is strong, when the children know the Lord in the house, when they are filled with the Holy Spirit, not just speaking in tongues, but because the Spirit's character Christ-like nature is manifest in them. This church will be different. Amen. Amen. Because if every household brought three people a year to this church, we will realize that this church is inadequate. We will change it. We will have four services. When the church in the home, the Bible says, where two or three are gathered together. <laughs> to me, that means I and my wife form the divine coral. Amen. There's a direct, when the foundation of Christ has been built, there's a direct link between your family life and your spirituality. Because if a man or a woman says they are filled with the Holy Spirit, ask their spouse. What happens in these hard economic times? Are you fighting or you are trusting God that these two shall pass and he will see you through? My children were the first to notice when, when they were little. They are all big now. So they, when I'm broke, because when I was a younger man and I get broke, I come home doing what? Dancing. Rejoicing. And they ask, Daddy, what's wrong with you? He says, I'm broke. He says, why are you, when you are broke, why are you dancing? It's because I don't have any responsibility. Now, unless my father in heaven sends money, I don't have any responsibility. So I rejoice because I'm going to see how my father is going to provide. 
according to his riches in glory. And the higher the challenge, the more I realize how good he is. For example, for the past two years, my girlfriend, my roommate, has not been well. We've spent about a quarter of a million CDs on her. Do I get worried? Hakuna Matahata. He has to decide whether it's time for her to go home, which he has decided not yet, or he has to supply every penny, and we don't owe anybody a peswa. Your family life will determine the level of your spirituality, and it will show up. Now she's a bit better. About two months ago, so I talked to my father. I said, maybe now I can start ministering. Hmm. Now I'm in trouble. Yesterday, I had to spend nine hours ministering. During this day, morning, there's another one on Zoom at 7 o'clock. Already an apostle has booked me for January. LIC has booked me for almost the whole of Feb February. Pastor, if you don't see me, I have him backsliding. Let us, but I want to encourage all married and young, uh, married men and women here. Change your perception about what constitutes spirituality. You can speak in tongues. I don't, I don't mind. The Bible says also the devils also speak in tongues. I believe that most of the people here, I became a Christian before they were born. I've been by God's grace. I became I came to know the Lord as a teenager. And I thank God for the gift of tongues. Because I don't speak tongues in the pulpit for a different reason. Except occasionally overflowing, then you catch me. So don't come and tell me that you say you don't. Because the essence of it, after you get to a point, words are not enough to exalt God, to plead Him, to intercede, and then the Spirit will take over. Amen. It's not a showmanship. It is power. Holy Spirit's power in us. Amen. However, <laughs> the Bible itself says there are higher gifts. And as you desire them, there are too many, excuse me, to say foolish Christians around because they won't ask for the gift of wisdom. Tongues. There is the gift of faith, not the saving faith, but the one. I knew one of my leaders at the University of Ghana of blessed memory, Franklin Dove. When we go out for crusades, when we are all down, big brother says that courage. He speaks a word and everybody's spirit is revived because he had the gift of faith. So I am not saying that the spiritual gifts are there for personal edification, for building the, the saints and for outreach. However, our true spirituality, if we are married, will depend upon our family life. In a sense, I have to sometimes be very careful because most of the time I don't care what they write to me in the papers because they don't know me. When I come to church, maybe apart from about two people who are my co-equals in age, how many of you are 74? Raise your hands. 74. I was have to note down some bar. Yeah, no more. Because I know that my own apostle, Lavi, is my junior by several years. <laughs> the trouble. 
simple is this no matter how everyone knows me partially other people know me as an economist others who know me as a christian thank god others who know me as a marriage counselor partially the person who knows me through and through is my wife the best woman god made akosia brewa and her words mean more to me excuse me to say than president akufuado And therefore, when he says, Stephen, what you are doing is not right, then the, he is fulfilling scripture, Ephesians 5.21, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. That comes before wives are asked to submit to their husbands. Let us test our spirituality by what we do at home do we read the bible every day do we pray do we show integrity in our tax administration do we bring home monies we have not earned and the rest that will show whether we are filled with the holy spirit let me expedite it quickly because the other one which the Lord used was a book I read several years before I married once again. I read the, a tract and then immediately the Holy Spirit said that when you marry, this is your second marriage counseling. At our time, there was no marriage counseling in any church. We praise God that my wife and I started family life ministry in Ghana and almost all the church's family counseling depend upon the work the Lord led us to initiate in 1982. And there are some few books there. I've displayed them by my wife and I. You can buy some. You get wiser and I get richer. <laughs> On a more serious note, the track was by Norman Vincent Pell or Peel. And I read it when I was a university student. And he says that he had never seen a man or a woman, a couple rather, who read their Bible every day who had a problem in their marriage they couldn't solve. Then I said, what? If a white American is writing that he hadn't seen, he's a counselor, a man and his wife, a woman and a husband, who read their Bible every day, who had a problem in their marriage. Then I said, them, the guy from Hiramwasi, I need double dose. Because So I say, when I marry, I will read the Bible with my wife every day in the morning and in the evening. We say it to the glory of God. We've been married how many years? 47 and a few months. We have not fought one day. Because this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. You shall meditate upon it, not morning, oh, day and night. And you shall be careful to do all that is written in it. Then your way shall be prosperous. And you will have good success. Not success be by heart. 47. Are you sure we are married? Because everything people told us at our marriage, we don't know it because of this. Why did we become marriage counselors then? Not because of us. Three months after we married, people were coming to us with gargantuan family life problems. And we didn't know how to answer them. So we decided to study so that we can help other people. 
when this is at the center of your marriage of your family life you will be prosperous you will have good success there will be joy of the lord irrespective of what you go through it doesn't mean that everything will be kosher my wife has gone under the surgeon's knife about uh, eight or nine times but we are together because our vow said for better for worse for richer for poorer in sickness and in health till death I know that my, some of my family members got angry I married at Accra Rich Church and part of my wedding speech was that this woman are marrying for life if by chance you see her commit adultery don't tell me just pray for me because i'll marry her all the same because it has nothing to do with her it has to do with my obedience to my vow and as a man of integrity when i vow for better for worse for richer for poorer in sickness and in health till death it means that period the la the third thing the lord taught us which <laughs> i that one when we are marrying i have to ask him <laughs> you people out there sometimes i don't understand you when i'm about to marry take me to the song of songs and something like that why do you take me to ephesians chapter 6 verse 26 be angry but do not sin let not the sun go down on your anger and i asked god what has that to do with marriage and he, all that he told me is that do you say i should help you i said yes then <laughs> obey before you complain so i have to find and to understand it and i didn't get to any theological book and my understanding is that there should not be more than 12 hours for any misunderstanding between my wife and I which is not resolved because the sun should not go on our anger you try it and see and because we read the Bible in the morning and the evening and often you know the miserable offenders are more often the men though the women also do when it's about 7, 7, 15 then you start shivering because of the commandment <laughs> let not the sun <laughs> go down on your anger so let me conclude that session and the 5 minutes for the single people is this let us and let's sometime we'll talk about marriage and everything else let us test our spirituality by the quality of our family life and when we are holy at home we will be holy at church we will be holy at work we will be holy in the streets and god's name will be glorified my family because i was an international public servant and a diplomat have lived in many australia namibia south africa ethiopia new york london we were Thank God that now, from there I'm going to heaven. I won't move again. But wherever we went, especially among white people, within a short time, they were coming to our house in a very friendly way. One of them, called Stephen, a Polish, who came and asked my wife, Georgina, do you like crabs? She says, yes. From that day, Every week we had a basket full of crabs, big basket or not small. That was his hobby, catching crabs. But I tried to find out why normally white people they don't care about blacks, they don't even talk to themselves. Then why would they wherever whether we are in Australia or America or Britain, all of them? Do you know what the Lord told me? 
one thing I asked you and you have been doing. That is the point of attraction. When I married, I said that I will open the car for my wife every day, every time. And apparently, wherever you go, just opening your car for your wife was such a novelty. White people also want to come. What's your secret? When we live our lives in the way God, and he says, oh, where is it in the Bible? Go to 1 Peter 3, 7. He says that if you don't, the original Greek, though don't ask me, Apostle, don't test me on my Greek, but I have studied it before, but I'm rusted. I have a Bachelor of Divinity and a Master's in Theology, Old Testament. But my Hebrew and my Greek now are rusty. But one thing, when it comes to marriage, I learn them properly. <laughs> when, you, where, when you go to 1 Peter 3, 7, the word used by the Holy Spirit is that if you don't treat your spouse, actually there, specifically your wife, with courtesy, God will not hear your prayers. You see how many foolish people, foolish prayers we pray here? He says that if you, he didn't say that when you fight with your wife, oh, when you don't treat your wife with courtesy, what we call a brofusem. Hi, darling, mind the gutter. He says, when you don't do it, God, God, will not hear your prayers. Not quite the mitra honomo. Not because you are bringing one anti. When you go to one anti, me, me, odo yewu. Let us measure our spirituality by our family life. Then why did I bring in the sexuality in conclusion? Let me tell you. In the Bible, there's nothing that shows that adultery or even fornication is the worst sin. The unpardonable sin has nothing to do with adultery. Or, or am I getting it? Apostles, two apostles. If you agree with me, then I'm okay. Is the unforgivable sin adultery or fornication? No, okay. The unforgivable sin is that when the Holy Spirit has convicted you and demonstrated the power of God, and yet you attribute it to Satan. You cannot be forgiven because you have taken the glory of God and given it to Satan. So adultery and fornication are not the unforgivable sin. But why then does the Bible talk about this so much? When even Israel sins, he says he's a prostitute. The reason is this. Your attitude, whether you are single or married to sexuality, is a very important test of your spirituality. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, it says the unmarried person is excited about the things of the Lord. He's not looking for a husband or a wife. Make his service your delight. If you don't manage your sexuality and you are a young person living in fornication, daydreaming, masturbation, ask for deliverance and stop it. Because it's a test of your spirituality. When I got married, I, no, I got engaged. I went to Kumasi to show off my beautiful wife, the best woman God made. There's a book about her called Akos, the best woman God made. There's no woman like my wife. All apologies to Osafo's wife. Anyway, these young girls, how can they match my wife? <laughs> they have to grow up. <laughs> but you see, I cry a better car, no? On a man who a or born home again. On a more serious note, so I went to with my wife to be Kumasi and one of John Riversin. 
He was working with Christian senior brother, working in BRRI. I said, John, this is the woman I'm going to marry. He says, what? I never thought that you are on the war path. In other words, he never thought that I, have, I was thinking about marriage. In fact, I never thought about marriage until God says that it's time. I was so excited serving the Lord. <laughs> he thinks that he will not be interested. One day, I had a thought about marriage. I said, God, when I, the woman I want to marry must be a Christian. Number one, demonstrated Christian life consistently. And there's a third one, which was a foolish one. I won't tell you, but God answered it. And then I just wrote it and put it down. When he asked me to go and marry her, do you know what I did? I went and took my notebook. Is she truly born again believer? I knew. Is she seriously demonstrated a Christian, consistent Christian life? If, if I didn't know that, I could have asked his father, Reverend Ejabin, because I could say to the glory of God that I didn't know in this country ten women who were more holy than my wife. So I ticked it. Then I went to the third one, which was a foolish one, but God will answer it. I said that my wife should be earning a certain amount of money. That was exactly her salary. I don't, don't use that one because... But what I'm saying is this. I wrote it down and just, and just went, went about serving the Lord. Until God says that it's time. Let us manage as single people our spirituality by delighting in the things of the Lord and our want of a husband, of a wife, shall be his care. Amen. When we want somebody to clean the church, the young people must be here. When we were younger scripture union people, all the churches persecuted us, including the church of Pentecost. At that time, <laughs> when Elder uh, Ejabin and other things were the few people in the university who were Pentecost, because at that time, to be very educated is not being spiritual. But Jimmy Bray. But do you know why all the churches we want their heart? It's because of the quality of the life of the scripture union people in church when you wanted to clean the church they are there when you wanted to make contribution they are there when the pastor's house was weedy mama sofu does not weed it they were there and very soon we became elders <laughs> when he was young in his early 20s he was elder so we call him elder Dempster. you could understand why a 22 year old could be called an elder because in the orthodox church I just say Mojegu your elder the young people because they manage their spirituality they lived pure life and they made the service of the Lord his delight. All the churches, there was a time every main line church was led by scripture union, the Methodist, the Presbyterian, the Church of Pentecost. Why? Because while they were young, they lived for Christ. May God himself help us and strengthen us First, to know him as our Lord and Savior. For no other foundation can anyone lay than the one that has been laid, which is Christ Jesus. He died for us and rose again. But we are to build on it. Managing our sexuality and our family life so that others may know we have been with Jesus. Amen. Uh, I want to ask... 
that when should separation occur? Because I learned that if uh, a couple, uh, both of them, either of them is in danger, there should be separation. So I, I, I want to to know why should, should that be? And then, yeah, who told you that? I was told. <laughs> okay. It has happened to my no, brother no, no. before. So. It, it's okay. I'm just joking. Please. Te teaching must be exciting, not a... no. Even though Apostle Labi is a teacher, he's too serious a teacher. <laughs> First of all, God says, I hate divorce. So I'm glad you used separation. I didn't use divorce. Malachi 2, 15 and 16. They said that in the New Testament, there's a, a, an exception clause. No. When you go to Greek syntax, and it is repeated in the English, Jesus did not say that when your wife or husband commits adultery, you should divorce. He says, what he was, was saying is this. If you divorce, you have committed two sins. Listen carefully. The first is separating what God has joined together. He says, what God has joined together, let no man separate, including the husband and the wife. That in the sinful way to happen, and I, I'm not condemning those people, but let us understand scripture. Then you commit a second sin. When you divorce and you marry, you become an adulterer. And he says the second one, and there are comments there. I'm not good. Let me tell you what he says is he said has to do with the second part is that before you divorce if the person had already committed adultery you have not made her or him an adulterer he didn't but the first one remains amen therefore the issue of separation and you can find it properly explained in my book uh, the book of my wife and I God's master plan for marriage All the teaching about divorce as a cause for di uh, uh, adultery as a cause of divorce is not based on biblical exegesis based upon the syntax and where the comments are put in the original Greek as to separation Paul talks about it for several reasons even for us we may agree to separate for some time for special especially apostolic 21 day fasting sometimes i wonder that they have made <laughs> almost uh, eating a sin they finished 21 days then 40 days another thing like since when did eating become sinful but one of the things is that you may decide <laughs> to to separate for that. Also, in 1 Corinthians 7, he says that when at that time in the church, there were many believers who have just become believers and their spouses were not believers. And he says, if the unbeliever says he, he doesn't want to marry, you can't force him. So I let him go. And he says that it is better for you to stay unmarried. So there will be cases where separation may allow for cooling off and hopefully people will come to reason i have seen two friends who have one divorced 14 years by god's grace they are back married again and are happy so in the scripture there is separation for exceptional cases especially when somebody's life is in danger and other things but not divorce. Um, prof, I have a question. Go ahead. That's why you are. The Bible says that what God has put together, let no man put asunder. So that is the yes. divorce. Can we say that all marriages are put together by God? Amen. <laughs> In fact, 
The sermon I didn't preach. I was going to share 10 points. And the first point is that you are married to the right person. Amen? You are married to the right person. Listen. Don't believe, you know, marriage is made in heaven and other things. Good marriages depend upon commitment of the two to obey God. It has nothing to do with beauty, though, if you happen to be blessed. And to me, men, you know, men, man, you say, I must say, yes, yeah, mommy. And they have the audacity to tell me, and that's why I'm angry with them. Say, ah, mommy, thank you for improving our looks. That's all they tell me. You don't come with a tag. We are here to ruin your marriage. <laughs> Unless you put your feet down. Then I say, well, at least I chose it. I did well. So let us abandon the idea. Oh, I didn't marry the right person. Young man and young woman, you have married the right person. You are married, you will be okay, provided you obey God's rule of marriage. Submit to your husband. Love her unconditionally and the rest. So this is my belief that even Paul says that in that time, when you were married to an unbeliever, don't seek a divorce. Ask God's intervention. A word to the wise is Hazarkes. Thank you.